Hello, friends. Hello, hello. I'm Dr. Ken Berry. Welcome to this next live question and answer session. Hopefully, we can get a lot of questions answered tonight. Don't forget to remind your mama that I'm live. You know, she always forgets. Aunt Bessie, Uncle Herman, who is it that always forgets this live? I'm excited to hang out with you guys for a little while tonight, uh, answer a bunch of questions. Ambitious Antiques eating a tomahawk steak right now. I'm jealous. I just had six eggs with some beef short ribs cut up in the eggs and scrambled in. It was freaking delicious. Salted it up nicely. It was wonderful. I've been watching your comments before we went live and I saw a couple of people asking, saying that meat and other animal foods are getting expensive. They are. Uh, and that they're uh, becoming short in supply. And a trick that Nisha and I always use when we can't find the cut of meat or if we're looking for organ meat, especially heart, liver, kidney, brain, we always check out the, the Hispanic grocery stores the Asian grocery stores and the Middle Eastern grocery stores. So many of us, it's just a habit. You go to Walmart or Costco or Kroger and you never think about checking out the small ethnic grocery stores. They have cuts of meat that uh, you're looking for. They also have cuts of meat you've never seen in your life and didn't even know that people ate very often. And Nisha and I have tried tons of different unique cuts of animal foods from the the um, the Hispanic, Asian, and Middle Eastern uh, grocery stores, and they're always delicious. They're always fresh, and they seem to always have stock. And so if you can't find what you're looking for at the big box grocery stores, check out the smaller uh, privately owned grocery stores. Uh, L, LJ Dibbin says, should I, I be taking iodine? Is it safe for me to take it? I have no thyroid due to papillary cancer. My TSH is 2.1, free thyroxine 1.1, and I'm on 112 mics of uh, Synthroid a day. Yeah, LJ and everybody else watching, this includes you. Every cell in your body needs iodine for proper function and definitely for optimal function. We all think, oh, it's just the thyroid. That's all iodine's about. That's absolutely not true. I have a YouTube video that I go into detail about iodine. And down in the show notes of that video, I have links to the research that show that there's no doubt every cell in your body has a sodium iodine symporter and uses iodine on a daily basis. So everybody, I know you're, you've been trained to think this, but stop thinking that iodine is just for your thyroid. That is not true. Your thyroid concentrates iodine more than any other organ in your body. Your breast tissue, both men and women, concentrate iodine. Your salivary glands concentrate iodine, but every cell in your body needs iodine for optimal function. Okay. Now let's see if I can find another one. Uh, tell me where you're watching from. What city, what state, what country? Where are you at in the world right now? I want to see where you're at so I can say hello. Uh, heart like a lion says, will, uh, green powders break my intermittent fasting? Yeah. All the green powders, first of all, they're a waste of money. The, uh, you know, the vegetable powders, the, the green powders, the, they've been advertising the heck out of them. And a lot of people have been misled by the advertising because it makes it sound like you're going to get a year's worth of vegetables and, you know, one scoop. They're a complete and utter waste of money. Any nutrition that might've been in the vegetables, uh, has been completely processed out. They're, it's just green powder. And I'll bet you money they have to add green coloring to the powder to make it green after all the processing that it goes through at the at the chemical factory. So don't waste your money on the green powders. Oh, there, there you guys are. Memphis, Mobile, Alabama, Oklahoma. There's John in Ireland. Star in uh, Ontario. Who else we got in here? Florence from Norfolk, Norfolk, Nebraska. Jason in Texas. 
Uh, Matlas X says, is there any problem eating sausages and brats? Is there anything I should be looking out for? Yeah, anytime you buy a, a processed meat like that, and when I say a processed meat, basically it just means it's been ground up and shoved into a tube. Uh, always check the total car carbohydrate count and check the ingredients. Make sure it's the ingredients are just meat uh, and make sure that they haven't snuck a bunch of sugar in there and you'll, you'll be able to detect that in the carbohydrate count. If it has more than one gram of carbohydrate per serving, it's it's got too much sugar in it. Wisely's watching from the Caribbean. Deb in South Carolina. I love it. Welcome, guys. Welcome. Is anybody, is this the first live you've ever caught? If so, type new in the comments so I can welcome you to the live. We, we do this as often as we can because I know you guys always have questions and I try to answer as much many questions as I can. Thank you, Robert, for the super chat. Nick has a question. Whoa, stop. Uh, thanks to you, carnivore, for five months and feel great. I've lost 35 pounds. I'm down to 184. One issue I have is my small LDL is elevated, and I'm worried the total doesn't bother me. I eat no added sugar any way to lower. Yeah, Nick, just keep doing what you're doing, okay? Uh, don't worry so much about the the – particle number. Don't worry at all about your total LDL, but your small LDL is still elevated. That'll get better with time. Oh, that was a good one and I missed it. Dang it. Oh, there's Maxine in Australia. Hello, Maxine. Good to see you. Yeah, Mary Johnson, welcome to all the newbies. We're so glad to have you. Uh, Nisha and I do a live Q&A like this every Monday night at 7 central time. And so you're always welcome to join us there. Troy Bishop has lost 100 pounds since he started eating a proper human diet. Uh, Paul Benson wants to know, where do I get iodine from? I actually have a YouTube video about iodine-rich foods. And I'd much rather you get your iodine from real food. And it's uh, almost exclusively going to be seafood. There's a little bit of iodine in pastured organ meat and pastured eggs but seafood is the main source of iodine in the human diet. If you need a supplement, I'm not necessarily opposed to it. I would just much rather you get your iodine from food because it's better, easier to absorb that way. Chris Mack says, how long is it safe to take berberine? Is it a good long-term supplement to take? Uh, yeah, berberine is pretty darn safe. It's basically an over-the-counter version of metformin or, or glucophage. A lot of people get off all their type 2 diabetes medication, especially the insulin when they start eating a proper human diet. But they might stay on glucophage, metformin, or berberine for a few few more months. I would take it until your A1C is back down to normal. Then I would, I would would you, you have no need for it anymore. And let's keep in mind, the berberine is not going to, that's not what makes your A1C go back to normal. It's, it's eating a very low carbohydrate diet. Uh, Judy says, what exactly is a proper human diet? Thank you, Pam, for the super chat. Uh, a proper human diet is a ancestrally appropriate diet. So it's going to be filled with foods that human beings have been eating for longer than 20,000 years. OK, you can't say, oh, we've been eating this or that for 100 years. You can't even really say, oh, we've been eating wheat for for 12,000 years. Yeah, there was a huge catastrophe that happened about 12,000, 13,000 years ago that forced us to stop being hunter gatherers and basically forced us to, to become subsistence farmers, basically slaves to the crops. And there's an excellent book, I'll post it in my Patreon, that the, asked the question, did we domesticate wheat or did wheat domesticate us? Because, and I think that's a very valid question. But a, a proper human diet is very nutrient dense. Every diet, every bite is full of nutrition, full of amino acids, fatty acids, vitamins, and minerals. Uh, every bite is by definition low carbohydrate because human beings are by design low carbohydrate mammals. We can't eat a high carbohydrate diet for too long or we get sick. We get fat, we get inflamed, and we start to develop metabolic disease. We eat foods that are satiating in quality, which means that when you've eaten enough food, they turn off your hunger signal. So that's not going to include any of the highly processed crap that comes from factories. You know how you could just eat Doritos all day long and never really get full. And then you take a big drink of Coke and then you're like, yeah, I'll have some more Doritos. And you take a big drink of Coke. 
they actually employ food chemists who try to make their, their food like products hit, hit something called a bliss point. And so you never get full. You just keep eating and eating and eating until you've eaten hundreds of dollars of their food over the course of the week and you never were full. Real proper human food isn't like that. When you've eaten enough nutrition, your hunger hormones turn off and your satiation hormones turn on and you're full and you're happy and you're, you are you don't have sugar coma. You're not ready to take a nap. You're ready to go outside and play or you're ready to get productive. Uh, a proper human diet is very mineral, mineral rich. A proper human diet, none of the food comes from a factory. All of the food is real, whole, one ingredient food. That's what a proper human diet is. That, that, those are kind of the, the principles. Now, for some of us, a proper human diet doesn't include any plants because of the phytates, the lectins, the oxalates, the phytoestrogens. Some of us can seem to tolerate the plants and do just fine. Uh, Robert Hernandez says 9.5 to 5.6. I'm guessing that meant your A1C. That's freaking amazing in three months. And you have diverticulitis. Yeah. So if you have diverticulitis, Robert, you want to avoid any highly processed food whatsoever. I've got a YouTube video about diverticulitis. You can get watch for more information. Nuts and seeds have nothing to do with diverticulitis. What causes you to have a flare up is if you're overweight, if you're smoking, if you're eating a lot of highly processed uh, ground up food, that's going to make you have a flare up of diverticulitis. Thanks for the super chat, Pam. Why does it jump like that? YouTube, make it stop jumping like that. I can't read the comments when they jump. See the pill 1128 says our ancestors died so much younger though. And this is a very common myth that's out there. The way our ancestors died was in the, in the first few years of life from a childbirth accident uh, from from an infection, from the delivery process, or from trauma, or from infection. If they made it through the first part of their life, they lived into their 70s, 80s, and 90s, just like we do now. Uh, paleoanthropology, it, this is very well known. We didn't die in our 30s. The average lifespan was the 30s, but that doesn't mean everybody just dropped dead in their 30s. You, when you factor in all the causes of death, trauma, infection, and then and then in the first year of life, the, the transition from being inside your mom to being outside your mom, those were 95% of the deaths back then. They didn't have antibiotics. They didn't have trauma centers, and they didn't have uh, obstetricians and surgery centers to help with, with when, a, when a childbirth went wrong. So they everybody died in that situation. That makes the average lifespan of our ancestors 50,000 years ago look very low, but that doesn't mean that they all died in their 30s. Well, if you got through those bottlenecks of infection, trauma, and childbirth, you live just as long as we live today. So uh, I'm glad you asked that question. It's a very common. Yeah, L. Son of John says we use wheat to make booze. So, so there's that. Yep, that's right. Wheat's bad for you, and so is the booze. <clears throat> Oh, let's see what's going on. Oh, Ellen says, what can I do about belly fat? Well, Ellen, I've got multiple YouTube videos to tell you exactly how to get completely rid of your belly fat, okay? But in a nutshell, you're going to eat a very, very low carbohydrate diet that's full of fatty meat, and you're going to do that one or two or three times a day, and you're going to keep doing that until your belly's gone. That's, that's how simple it is, but check out my YouTube videos about belly fat. Uncle Gunn says, was dropping uh, an average of one pound a week on low-carb paleo over 18 months. Now I'm down six pounds in 10 days on the beef, butter, bacon, and eggs challenge. Thank you, Bubba. You're welcome, Uncle. That's And any of you guys, if you don't know about this challenge, if you are currently obese, morbidly obese, uh, so big that the, the paramedics can't get you out of your house, if you will start eating beef, butter, bacon, and eggs, you can eat as much as you want. You can eat one, two, three, four times a day. Try to keep your meals within a eight hour feasting window and then fast for the other 16 hours of the day. But you can eat as much as you want of beef, butter, bacon, and eggs. You're going to lose weight like something's wrong with you. Okay. It's that simple. It really is. You can eat as much as you want. You don't portion control. You don't calorie count. None of that stuff is necessary when you're eating a proper human diet. James. Thanks for the super chat. Whoa, where'd you go, James? 
thought James had a question. Yeah, there we go. Day 18 of the 30-day beef, butter, bacon, and eggs challenge down 10 pounds, but hit a stall. It's only been 18 days, James. You can't call it a stall until you haven't lost any weight in three months. That's the official definition of a stall. All of our bodies are going to take a weight loss pause for a day or two every now and then. Keep doing what you're doing, brother. You're eating a proper human diet. <clears throat> Um, Malka Magnum says, hi, Dr. Barry, is there any way to cure glaucoma permanently? I have a, a YouTube video about glaucoma that tells you everything that I know about it and what you can do to slow down the progression and perhaps even reverse it. Check that video out. That'll help you with the glaucoma. Uh, any of you guys, if you have, uh, if you've watched a lot of my videos and you're like, man, I wish Dr. Barry had a video about this. Tell me the topic of the video you'd like me to make in the comments, and I will I'll try my best to figure out a way to make a video about that to help you out. Nilish says, Dr. Barry, I was waiting for so long for this session. My cholesterol level is over 300, and my sugar is 240. Please tell what to eat being a vegetarian. Is it genetic, or can I reverse it? Yeah, so Nilish, for all you uh, vegetarians out there, I think that you can do a proper human diet eating lots of vegetables, uh, but you got to eliminate the grains completely. You got to eliminate the sugars completely. You got to eliminate the vegetable seed oils like canola, corn oil, soybean, sunflower, safflower, sesame oil. Those things are not good for you. And you can eat lots of veg and try to eat the low carb veg. I've got a YouTube video about that. Try to eat low carb fruits and berries. I've got a YouTube video about that. And you're going to have to eat eggs and oysters, shellfish, uh, crustaceans, seafood. I understand if you don't want to eat soft and cuddly mammals, right? Because they they nurse their babies and they love their babies. And, and I, you may have a religious conviction not to do that. Or you may have a, just an ethical conviction that you personally have not to eat mammals. And I, I kind of understand that. I don't agree with it, but I understand it and I respect it. But you've got to add eggs and, and, and seafood into your diet. Uh, you've got to add crustaceans. Oysters are a superfood. They're so nutrient dense, it's not even funny. And then if you could add in some dairy fat like butter or ghee, that should give you enough fatty acids, enough amino acids, and enough vitamins and minerals that you should do much better than Elish. But Elish currently with a, a blood sugar of 240, you're eating way too many carbohydrates. You got to cut out all the processed carbohydrates and get rid of all the high carbohydrate fruits, fruit juices, soft drinks, uh, all that stuff's got to go and you'll completely reverse your type two diabetes. Have all you guys checked out uh, my docu-series that I was a part of. It's called Reversed. Uh, there's nine episodes and I think six are available right now. I put a link down in the show notes. You can watch them for free on yourhealthnetwork.com. There's a link down below so you can check them out. Uh, let's see. I answered that one. The road ahead. Yeah, it jumped. YouTube, please. Where did it go? Hang on. Hang on. That's really uh, helpful, YouTube, when the comments jump 500 ahead. Thank you for that. There we go. Okay. Road ahead. How dangerous is having high cholesterol in this way of eating, but also having a good drink of alcohol once or twice a month? I constantly feel worried of drinking. If you're having one or two drinks a month, that's probably not a big deal. Now, if you're having one or two drinks a month, that's a problem. Uh, I've got multiple videos on this YouTube channel about high cholesterol. I don't want to waste everyone's time talking about that. Just search in YouTube, Dr. Barry Cholesterol, and every video I've got about cholesterol will pop up, and then you can learn the road ahead why you don't need to worry about your high total cholesterol. All right, let's see what's going on. Pam Harbin says, thanks, Dr. Barry and Nisha. Lives are changing because of you. My husband, David, uh, had type 2. His A1C was 8. Now it's down to 6 with keto and intermittent fasting. Thank you for all your videos. That's awesome, Pam. Keep helping him to lower the carbohydrates and he'll soon have a normal A1C and will no longer have type two diabetes. He will have reversed it, just like we helped the people do in the docu-series reversed. Uh, Ash Ashia 
says thoughts on using carnivore to heal varicose veins. So if you have very large varicose veins, you're probably not going to heal those with any diet. You're probably going to have to see a vascular surgeon and have a simple little surgical procedure done. But if you have little spider veins, I've had multiple people reach out and tell me that their, their spider veins got much better or went completely away when they adopted a proper human diet. Hey, Marsha. Yep. Uh, any of you guys who've been watching my lives for a year or two and watched a lot of my YouTube videos, feel free to reach out to the newbies and help them with the, the simple questions. I really appreciate that. Uh, Blue Moon says, my husband has stage three kidney disease. Is a is a type two diabetic with an A1C of 10. Oof. Post quadruple bypass in 2013. Do you su suggest keto or low carb? Is protein safe? Yeah, your husband got stage three kidney disease and, and a heart attack and type two diabetes from eating too many carbs. None of that stuff came from eating meat and vegetables. Okay, your husband 100% needs to adopt a ketogenic diet, a ketovore diet, or a carnivore diet tomorrow. If you love your husband and want to keep him around uh, after th this many complications. He is his his situation is precarious. OK, you're going to have to say, look, honey, I love you, but I'm going to leave your ass if you eat one more slice of bread, one more ding dong. If you drink one more Coke, that means you don't love yourself and therefore you don't love me. OK, so the, the carbs are done. The carbs are over. That's what got you in this situation. We're going to start eating a proper human diet now and do this. So my YouTube videos about type two diabetes and how to reverse it are going to help protect his kidneys. They're going to help protect his heart. They're going to help completely reverse his type two diabetes and get him back to a level of health that I promise you, he never dreamed that he would have again. LA for dreams said started, started beef, butter, bacon, and egg challenge today. Can I eat pork? You can eat bacon or pork belly or pork skins if they're fried in animal fat, but otherwise leave the rest of the pig alone for the 90 day challenge. Mike has lost 76 pounds since March, but he's been stalled for two weeks. That's not a stall, Mike. That's temporary pause. Keep doing what you're doing, brother. Your body every now and then has to take a break. Okay. All right. Let's see what we got here. Uh, Courtney, I've got multiple videos on this channel about hypothyroidism, low thyroid. They'll help you a lot. Uh, Tina, yeah, I do have a video on AFib uh, on this YouTube channel. Hey, Sherry Morgan, how's it going? Uh, Sherry said, I had an egg white wrap that has xanthan gum in it without knowing, woke up with extreme joint pain. Could this could it be this or maybe under eating calories? It could be either one. Uh, if you're under eating foods, you need to eat food until you're comfortably stuffed. Sherry, probably some people do have a reaction to xanthan gum. Some people probably don't. Terry O'Rourke is a type. Now, listen up, you, you diabetics. He's a type 1 diabetic, and he's been, he's been eating a proper human diet, and his latest A1C was 4.8. Do not ever let a doctor tell you as a type one diabetic that, that you don't deserve a normal A1C or that you can never attain a normal A1C. That is bullshit. Okay. You deserve a normal A1C. You can expect to have a normal A1C when you start eating a proper human diet. Absolutely. Well done, Terry. Well done. Uh, Catherine asked about hair loss Everyone on any diet, if they're losing weight, they're going to lose some degree of hair. Also, it depends on your hormone status, your age, your gender. All these things matter. I've got a, a uh, definitive video on this channel about hair loss when you're losing weight. That video will help you understand. Seth, I've got a video on this channel about interstitial cystitis. If any of you guys have recurrent bladder infections, or recurrent bladder inflammation, a proper human diet, once you eliminate the crap that's causing it, your bladder will be very happy to be inside your body. Lauren says, I'm new to chat. Hi from Oklahoma, five months postpartum. Uh, I've been doing AIP ketovore, still iron deficient, 12% uh, iron saturation, supplement or stay the course. Lauren, if you like organ meat, if you keep eating your red meat every day until you're stuffed, and you eat some liver, it can be chicken liver, beef liver, goose, pork, cow, liver three times a week. And I promise you, it won't be many more 
weeks or months until you've completely saturated your body with iron. You will never be iron deficient again if you're able to eat liver. All right, let's see what else is going on here. Um, what else was I going to tell you? Oh, I, yesterday I posted a video which was, it covered some sensitive material. It was about uh, women being subjected to pelvic exams, vaginal exams, while unconscious, without consent at hospitals. And uh, if any of you guys have, I know that was a little bit triggering and uncomfortable for some of you guys to watch. And if you have any questions about that video, uh, feel free to ask them now. I've got links to multiple articles because I had a couple of people say, there's no way this is true. This cannot be happening in modern society. Yep. Sorry to tell you, it's 100% happening. It still happens. It's been outlawed in five states in the United States, but this is still happening all over the world. It's, it's egregious and it's embarrassing for me to even be a doctor and know that other doctors are doing this. But it is a thing and uh, you need to be aware of the information in that video. Frank L. says, oh, wait, whoa, Frank, YouTube jumped on me again. That's really annoying. Yeah, I said BS. That's right. Hang on. Let me go back and find Frank's. It's like 800 messages back. Thanks for the super chat, DJ. Thanks, Tatiana, for the super chat. Hang on, Michelle. I'll get to you in a second. I'm working on a video, Michelle, right now about frozen shoulder. Yes, 100%. You can help your frozen shoulder with by, by changing to a proper human diet. Well, they only go back so far. Okay, I'll just have to pick up from here. Uh, Yep, Michelle has a frozen shoulder. So if any of you guys have a frozen shoulder or adhesive capsulitis, this is 100% caused by your diet. There might have been an injury to your shoulder that also contributed a little bit, but 95% of it's from your diet. I'm working on a YouTube video about this right now. It is intimately connected to insulin resistance and hyperinsulinemia. Now, if you've got a, a severely frozen shoulder right now, you're either going to have to do the exercises that the physical therapist told you until you break it loose yourself at home. Granny Berry, my 91-year-old grandmother, she had frozen shoulder and she did not want to have surgery. So she got her, her yardstick or her meter stick and she did her exercises faithfully for every night for months and she broke both of them loose herself. And now her shoulders are fine. If you can't do that, then uh, you go see your doctor. They put you under anesthesia after you tell them, I do not consent to a pelvic exam. Michelle. And then they basically crank your shoulder like trying to start an old Model T Ford car that had the crank on the front and that breaks loose the adhesions. But it, you will re-adhese again if you're still eating an inflammatory high carbohydrate diet. OK, but I, I'll, that video should be out within a week about frozen shoulder. Hey, Paola, how's it going? You guys, Paola is a wealth of information. Uh, she's in my private Patreon group. She's always helping people understand a, a proper human diet. She is a wealth of information. Let's see what else we got here. Gary says keto carnivore caused xanthalasma. If that's true, Gary, that you'll be the first person I've ever seen uh, who got xanthalasma from eating a proper human diet. 99.9999% of people I've seen with xanthalasma has got them eating the standard American diet. Um, so uh, you might want to go back and look at that diet again. I'm not doubting you that, that you've been eating that, but uh, you probably already had the, the uh, building blocks of your xanthalasma set up before you started your proper human diet. AM says, if have a health question, just Google or YouTube the question followed by Dr. Barry. Most of the time I find a Dr. Barry video that answers it. Yeah, AM, that's exactly right. And thank you for bringing that up. If you, if you, any of you guys, if you have a medical condition, just go to either YouTube or Google and type in that condition. So like high cholesterol, Dr. Barry, or thyroid, Dr. Barry. And, and Google and YouTube will find every video of mine. Not only videos on my channel, but if I if I did a podcast on someone else's channel talking about that condition, low testosterone, 
uh, iodine, any of these things, hundreds of different medical topics. Just go to Google or YouTube and type in whatever your condition is, type 2 diabetes, Dr. Barry. And if I have a video or did a podcast or, or did a guest appearance, that video will pop up. And then you've got that free information right there that you can enjoy. Thank you for that super chat, I am. Oh, let's see. Yes, ambitious antique. I did say BS. That's true. You guys, aren't we all grown-ups in here? <laughs> Fully laden swallow. Hello, my friend. Going to be starting on armor thyroid, which is a hormone, uh, a thyroid hormone replacement. Uh, how long should I wait for new blood work? Uh, six to eight weeks. Anytime you guys start or increase or decrease a thyroid medication, you're going to recheck labs in six to eight weeks. That's pretty much the standard. <clears throat> Maria Flores says, with the fear of food becoming scarce, should we arm ourselves with a long-term foods? Uh, and she's talking about like stuff with a 25-year uh, storage life, which are heavy, heavy on carbs. It's a great question. I mean, times are kind of antsy right now, right? I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow, much less next week, next month, or next year. I hope all of you guys have two or three weeks of food and water stored at your house right now. Please, if you don't have that, next time you go to the grocery, every time you go, get a couple of gallons of water, buy some uh, sardines in, in spring water, buy some cod liver, buy some canned meat, and put that stuff back so that you've got enough food for two weeks and enough water for two weeks. Because, I mean, honestly, how is the world going right now? You never know what's going to happen. So yeah, all you guys now, there's two things here. Uh, if you're trying to not starve to death, then yeah, eat the grains, eat the sugar, drink all the Coca-Cola you can find, eat the vegetable oils. Yeah, eat all that crap. Eat all the ding-dongs and honey buns and donuts you can if what your goal is to not starve to death. But if your goal is to optimize your health and reverse chronic disease, then you've got to eat a proper human diet to do that, right? But if times get bad enough, then yeah, you, you're you going to be uh, just like, uh, what was the zombie movie where the guy was always looking for Twinkies? That's exactly, you will eat all the Twinkies because you don't want to starve to death if the zombies come. Linda says, what can you do for a gout flare? Linda, if, you, if you're having an acute gout flare right now, you're going to have to take the medication your doctor prescribed for you. But to prevent having gout flares in the future, you're going to go watch my YouTube video about gout. You're going to learn exactly what causes gout flare-ups. And I'll give you a hint. It's not meat or seafood. That's a big fat lie. That's one of the many lies that doctors tell you. Uh, once you find out what actually does cause gout, you will probably never have another gout flare-up. Fiona says, video idea, Graves and hyperthyroidism. I watch your thyroid uh, series and it's mainly hypo or Hashi's. Yep. Uh, most doctors are really good at managing hyperthyroidism. They're good at uh, diagnosing it and they're good at treating it and managing it. And that's why I don't make YouTube videos about that. I make YouTube videos about things that doctors currently suck at managing. Um, so, you know, like I don't make I don't make YouTube videos about how to reduce a compound fracture of your femur because doctors are good at that. If you if you have a compound fracture of your femur or hyperthyroidism, your doctor is going to immediately know what you got. They're going to diagnose it and they're going to know exactly either how to treat it or which specialist to get you to to treat it. So my YouTube videos are about stuff that doctors currently aren't good at doing or they don't know about, or they were never taught about. That's what my YouTube videos are about. So if I don't have a YouTube video about something, then it's either super, super rare and only two or 300 people in the country have it, or it's something that modern medicine's good at, okay? Uh, I don't have a video about treating diabetic ketoacidosis because ICUs are good at that. ICU doctors are excellent at correcting that, so I don't need to make a YouTube video. Oh. Let's see what else we got going on here. Tracy's three and a half years keto. I'm still sunburning. Why? Okay, Tracy, um, eating keto or carnivore is not going to make you completely impervious to the sun. You're still a human being. If you stay out long enough, you're going to burn. 
But when you remove all the vegetable seed oils and the inflammation that comes from eating the standard American diet, many of us have noticed we can stay in the sun twice as long, three times as long. Have any of you guys noticed that since you've been eating keto, ketovore, carnivore, can you stay in the sun longer without burning? Because I, sh- I can stay three times as long now as back when I was eating even paleo because I was still eating a lot of grapeseed oil. I thought that was good for me back then. Super high in polyunsaturated omega-6 fatty acids. Don't eat grape oil, okay? But I can stay three times as long in the sun now. But if I stay long enough, oh, hell yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get a sunburn because I'm, I'm a white boy. That's going to happen. But people notice, and everybody put in the comments, if you notice, you can stay in the sun two or three or four times as long now that you're eating a proper human diet. So people can see that. That sounds like foolishness to people who don't understand the power of diet, but it's absolutely true. Oh, come on, YouTube. Fix the comments. What are you doing? Anna Hall, any tips or advice for someone just starting keto carnivore and trying to kick the sugar and carb addiction? Go follow my good friend, Dr. Robert Sivis, C-Y-W-E-S. Somebody type his name in the comments. Uh, He is the carb addiction doc. And, and he 100% knows that sugar and carbs are addictive. He 100% knows that you never need to eat a carbohydrate for nutrition. Anytime you're eating carbohydrates, you are um, worsening your carbohydrate addiction, okay, if you have one. So go follow the Carb Addiction Doc. He will help you. He's got tons of strategies of how to break carbohydrate addiction. All right, I think I'm getting caught up. Yep, Robert Sivis, there you go. Everybody's typing it in the comments. Um, Anything for stronger blood flow? Work from the sewer, ask. Uh, Yeah, so your blood flow is determined by the strength of your heart to pump blood and the patency of your arteries and vessels, meaning they're not clogged up and inflamed. Once you've removed the inflammatory uh, hyperglycemic-causing foods from your diet, your heart's going to pump stronger and your arteries and your blood vessels are going to be cleaner and less constricted due to inflammation. Your glycocalyx is once again going to be healthy and it's going to help the blood go through and you're going to have better blood, blood, blood flow in every part of your body. And you may have been asking about a blood flow in a specific part of your body. If you were, yeah, proper human diet is going to help that too. I'm trying to find a good comment here, guys. Uh, If if I haven't answered your question, type it again. Type it in again. Heart Like a Lion says, I love your Keto 101 series. If any of you guys, if you're brand new to keto and you literally think that that eating a ketogenic diet means drinking slim fast keto shakes, go to YouTube and, and, and search for Dr. Barry Keto 101. I've got, I don't know, probably 150 videos that walk you through the beginning step by step abc one two three how to do keto right dr barry keto 101 and you can watch that playlist you don't even have to sit and watch it you can just listen to it like a podcast while you're doing whatever you're doing during your day oh what was that dr barry can you post the link for where did that go dang it Saturn 5 uh, says, hey, Doc, any downsides to keto carnivore to speak of? Yeah, the downsides are is that there are going to be big food corporations and big pharma corporations that are going to have to file bankruptcy. That's the downside of, of eating a proper human diet. Tons of you guys are saying I can stay in the sun a lot longer. Yeah, Kim Howerton said this pale lady doesn't burn in five seconds anymore. Same, yep. What's Beckett going to be for Halloween? Miss Midwest Mama wants to know. Beckett is going to be Blippi. Do you know who Blippi is? And guess who else is going to be Blippi? But Beckett doesn't know it yet, so don't tell him. I'm going to be Blippi, big Blippi. He's going to be little Blippi. And I forgot what Nisha's going to be. She changes her mind every five minutes. Oh, Katniss. Yeah, she's going to be Katniss. Yep. Uh, Paola, just a, thank you for that, Paola. I was just about to mention the Patreon group. Uh, we got 1,700 people watching right now, and the questions are going by like crazy. Uh, Lori says the downside of keto is your friends won't understand. They won't understand initially, but once they see the health transformation that happens in your life, 
they'll uh, magically begin to want to understand. They'll start asking you questions about how you did that. Uh, Jess says, I've had brain fog forever. Will it go away with ketovore? Tons of, tons of people with brain fog. And brain fog can be caused by multiple different things. But uniformly, it gets better when you start eating a very uninflammatory, very low carbohydrate diet full of animal products. Yeah, the symptoms of pseudo tumor cerebrae get better. I didn't see your name, but I saw your question. Yeah, they, they improve tremendously on a proper human diet. Uh, Brian says, I'm 68 years old. I have a CAC score of 146. Any concerns? Maybe, maybe not, Brian. Uh, I don't know how long you've been eating a proper human diet. What I would do if I were you is I would eat very strict proper human diet for 12 months and then get the CAC scan repeated. And I think you'll be pleasantly surprised to find that your CAC score went down. Oh, let's see what else we got. Yeah, Treasure Rescue, a.k.a. Queen Bean says, yes, Jess, brain fog goes away. It's pretty amazing. Kay Butler says her gastroenterologist says that she needs more fiber. How does keto affect colon polyps? Well, Kay, you got colon polyps eating the diet that you've been eating right? So what I would recommend to keep from making new polyps is to stop eating that diet. Uh, nothing in a proper human diet in keto, ketovore, carnivore causes polyps. Polyps are, are caused by very specific inflammatory things that happen in your gut when you're eating lots of highly processed inflammatory food. Stop eating the junk that comes from factories. Eat real whole one ingredient foods that either grow from the dirt or are things that ate what grew from the dirt. That is a proper human diet. That's proper human food. And you'll stop making new polyps if you do that. Now, you may keep your old ones for life, or they may regress and go away. I've seen that happen many times. Oh, man, they're going so fast. Okay, let's see. Viva Geste says, why don't medical schools teach proper nutrition? It's a good damn question, isn't it? You would think if someone, if, if a doctor is going to be tasked with the care and feeding of, of human patients, they should know what a proper human diet is. I, that, I totally agree with you. Uh, Daniel's worried about muscle loss with keto and intermittent fasting. Uh, any, any of you gentlemen or ladies who've actually put on muscle, eating keto, ketovore, carnivore, along with intermittent fasting, please put your story in the comments so that people like Daniel can stop worrying that somehow a diet full of fat and protein, which is what muscles are made of, vitamins and minerals, that there, I don't know why people are afraid that that's going to make them lose muscle. You're eating literally every building block that you need to build muscle when you're eating keto or ketovore or carnivore. So how in the hell could these diets make you lose muscle? That does, doesn't even make sense from a common sense standpoint. It definitely doesn't make sense physiologically speaking. Uh, if you eat lots of fatty meat and lift heavy weights, you're going to build muscle, my friend. That's how, that's how it works. I know Arnold Schwarzenegger is a vegan now or vegetarian or whatever, plant-based, but he got to be Arnold Schwarzenegger eating lots of meat and eggs. That's what he ate. I was reading the muscle and fitness articles from uh, 15, 20, 25 years ago. He would eat pounds of meat and dozens of eggs every day. That's how he got to be Arnold Schwarzenegger. He did not get there by being, eating a plant-based diet. What else do we have here? AEK says, because there's no money for the drug companies who donate to the medical schools in a proper diet. You may be onto something there, AE. Absolutely. Sherry Morgan says, thoughts on egg yolk powder. Would this be more nutritious than just egg white powder in a carnivore bread? Oh, 100%. So an egg white is just protein. There's very few vitamins and minerals in the white of the egg. All the vitamins and minerals are in the yolk. And so uh, I, and then for, that's the first thing. Secondly, never throw away an egg yolk. Eat every egg yolk. If you're going to throw anything away, uh, throw the, the white away. I'd rather you eat the shell. Eat the yolk, eat the shell. If you're going to throw something away, throw, throw the white away. Uh, but why are you 
using egg yolk powder. Why don't you just eat egg yolks like we've been doing for millions of years? That's what I would do. That's what I do do every day. Oh, Lisa Harper said, my doctor told me to stop taking vitamin D3 after my blood test. I wish you'd tell me what your level was, Lisa. Many doctors, if they see a vitamin D25 level of 75, 85, 95, they freak out and think that's toxic and that's stupid, okay? As long as your vitamin D level is under 100, an ideal range is 50 to 100 for vitamin D3 or vitamin D25 level, and you're going you're gonna to eat or take vitamin D3 to get it there, that's the, the optimal level. If your vitamin D level is over 100, all you're going to do is just decrease the amount of vitamin D you're taking today by 10 20%. And you'll fix it. It's not dangerous. There's no danger from, from having a high vitamin D level. I don't know why doctors freak out about that. It's so weird. How many eggs do you eat a day? Max wants to know. Well, I just had six with my beef short ribs. Uh, I, I eat anywhere from six to probably 15 egg yolks a day and anywhere from six to 10 egg whites a day. Typically, if I'm eating six eggs, I'll, I'll give the one or two whites to the dogs because I do best when my protein to fat ratio is very close to one to one. If I do high protein, moderate fat, I don't feel good and I just don't do as well. Now, that may be different for other uh, others of you. You may need to do high protein, moderate fat, but still very, very low carbohydrate. But I do best when I'm, I'm one to one fat to protein. That's where I do do my best. Yep, uh, blues, bluesium. Having a vitamin D twenty-five level of fifty to to one hundred protects you from lots of different viruses as well. That's totally true. Uh, Bill says, "Will a year of taking a squirt of keto chow electrolytes in my daily coffee cause me to have high potassium level in a wellness blood test?" No, Bill. If you have normal kidney function then a squirt of keto chow in every uh, container of liquid you drink every day for a year is not going to make you have high potassium or high magnesium. Uh, you need to see your doc. It could more than likely a medication you're taking that causes you to have the high potassium, but go see your doc and, and find out what's actually causing that. All right. So many questions. Uh, let me tell you guys, if you've got some important health questions, medical questions, uh, nutrition questions, and I wasn't able to answer them tonight, I have a private protected Patreon community that you can join for a buck a month, three bucks a month, five bucks a month, and you can ask your questions directly to me. I have an extra three live Q&As just like this inside of Patreon. So there's 100 people watching, not 2,000 people watching. So very often I'm able to answer every question in deep detail. So if you've got questions that you need the answer to, uh, my Patreon link is down in the show notes. It's a quick sign up and literally you can get in the door for a dollar a month, three dollars a month, whatever, whatever you can afford. That's that's what we ask for. Uh, and I'll answer your questions. OK. And you can also help support this movement of trying to teach the world what a proper human diet is and the benefits that you can get from eating a proper human diet. Uh, Edward asked about the daily aspirin. The vast majority of you guys, if you've never had a heart attack, you probably are not benefiting at all from taking that baby aspirin a day. Talk to your doctor before you stop it. But there's, there's a new study out, and I agree with the study. I think that taking an aspirin a day, there's more risk than there is benefit for almost everybody. Now, there's a few people, like if you've had a heart attack or two in the past, you might benefit from taking that baby aspirin at least two or three days a week. But if you've never had a heart attack, it's almost a certainty that you're not benefiting by taking that baby aspirin a day. But talk to your doctor before you stop it. Sherry says somebody gave her the egg yolk powder. Yeah, you eat your 25 yolks a day, Sherry. That's that's how you're going to keep looking like a superstar. Uh, whole Keto and Carnivore says, Dr. Paul Saladino talks about adding fruit as part of an animal-based diet. What are your thoughts? Whole food, keto, and carnivore. I think that as long as you, you, I think it's fine to add fruits and berries and honey to your keto as long as you keep your total carbohydrate intake under 20 grams a day. And if you're a ketovore, you're going to keep your total carbs under 10 total grams a day. 
And if you're a carnivore, you're going to eat as close to zero carb as you can a day. Basically, what Dr. Saladino is advocating now is a paleo diet. That's, that's um, you know, eat lots of meat, and eat lots of fruits and honey and stuff. That's paleo. That, that's, that's not new. That's already been done. That's old hat. And uh, most of you guys came to keto. Uh, I bet the majority of you already tried paleo and you didn't have much luck with it. And I'm afraid uh, that if you guys eat too many, too much, too much fruit and too much honey, you're just eating paleo again. So uh, for your birthday and for your anniversary, you can have some honey and fruit. OK, but on on every other day of the year, you need to be eating a proper human diet. The reason that human beings love sweets and the reason that we would eat as much fruit as we could get our hands on and eat as much honey as we could get our hands on is because back then, 20,000 years ago, we were facing the constant risk of starvation. So anything we could do to put on 5, 10, 20 pounds of body fat, that was a good thing. Because then if there was a if there was a famine for three months, you got 20 pounds of fat on your butt and on your belly that you can live on. We ate the high carb foods like that. 100% we ate them, but we ate them so we didn't starve to death in the winter. There's no magical health benefits to eating fruit or, or berries or honey. You can get better nutrition from animal based foods. But if, if you now, so like if we go back to a shit hits the fan situation and you're in danger of starving to death, yeah, you eat every apple and pear. You eat all the all the fruits you can get your hands on. You find the, the the canned peaches and heavy syrup. Eat every can of them you can get your hands on because you're in danger of starving. You want to eat that high carb food that's full of fructose to put body fat on as quickly as you can. That's what it's for. But if you're if what you're trying to do is optimize your health, then you're not going to do that. You're going to eat a very low carbohydrate diet that has all the other principles that I, I talked about at the beginning of this video. And if you're joining late at the beginning of this video, I gave you all the principles of a proper human diet. Just go back and watch this video from the start. And, and I list them out one by one by one what the what the principles of a proper human diet are. And I'm also working on a book by that name right now. So hopefully that'll be out before long. Margie uh, missed 99% of this because of a phone call. I'm sorry, Margie. I forgive you. You can go back and watch this on the replay. Tedro says, what supplements and vitamins do you need on a carnivore diet? If you're eating lots of organ meat and you're eating uh, a very grass-fed diet of animal foods, you don't need any. And you're getting lots of sunlight. Okay, now I got to throw that caveat in. But most people in modern society are going to maybe need a vitamin D supplement maybe need a vitamin K2 supplement and maybe need an iodine supplement. And then a lot of the foods that are grown in our modern situation are, are pretty low in the mineral content and they used to be very rich. And remember a thousand years ago, 5,000 years ago, we, we drank river water. We drank water from the stream. We drank mud puddle water. Okay. Those are all mineral rich. And that's why I work with Keto Chow to make the daily mineral drops is because a lot of our food that, that's grown today, even if it's grass finished and, and, and non-GMO and organic, it just doesn't have the mineral content. And iodine is one of the minerals. It doesn't have the mineral content that it once had. And that's why I made the daily mineral drops with Keto Chow. There's a link if you want to check them out in the show notes. All right. Let's see what else is going on here. Oh, uh, Jojo wants to know what's good for infected and inflamed gums. Um, I've actually done a couple of videos with uh, Dr. Lynn, who's a dentist. You 100% got to eat an animal based, low carbohydrate diet with no grains, no sugar, no vegetable seed oils, and your gums will get so much better. I used to have pretty severe gingivitis back when I was eating just the standard American crap. And now my gums never bleed when I brush my teeth. Never. I can't remember the last time, but they used to bleed every morning and every night when I brushed my teeth back when I was eating the standard American crap. What else do we have? Uh, Carmen says, is it good to have blood work checked after 24 hours of fasting? Thanks. No, it's not because some of your lab values can actually be falsely elevated if you fast for too long. The ideal time period for fasting before you have your blood work check is 12 to 14 hours. Okay, you don't want to go over 14 hours or your triglycerides, your blood sugar, other things might go up because you're fasting and your body needs to produce those things. 
So don't fast for more than 14 hours before lab work. Karen puts the daily mineral drops in her in her Keterade. That's excellent hack, Karen. I love that. That's a great job. What else is going on here? Uh, AE says, does showing trace ketones on the ketone pea stick count as being in ketosis? Uh, AE, stop wasting your money on urine ketone strips. They're notoriously inaccurate. If you're eating under 20 total grams of carbohydrates a day, you're in ketosis, okay, by definition. Eat lots of fatty meat and eat less than 20 total grams of carbs a day. You never have to buy another urine ketone strip. It's not necessary to eat a proper human diet. DJ says, 53-year-old male, newly diagnosed diabetes, uh, severe gout flare-ups, changed diet, and lost 56 pounds last in the last six weeks. Any suggestions on managing uh, type 2 diabetes and severe gout flare-ups? Yep, I got YouTube videos about both of them. DJ, go watch them for free. Apply the principles you learn them in there. Watch my video about uh, the principles of a proper human diet. That's going to completely reverse your type 2 diabetes and get rid of it. And you're going to, when you're either not going to have any more gout flare-ups or when you do have a gout flare-up, it's going to be very mild and very short-lived. Okay. T Tiny Bechtel says, Dr. Barry, please explain what you mean when you say a one-to-one -one ratio of protein to fat. So I try to eat things that, that are basically a one-to-one -one ratio of fat to protein. So if I eat six eggs, I'll throw away one or two whites so that I'm getting about a one-to-one -one pro protein to fat ratio. If I eat uh, beef, I'll eat a ribeye steak with none of the fat trimmed off. So I'm getting lots of lean meat, but also lots of fat meat too. That's what I mean by one-to-one. -one. Good question. Okay, let's do... Steve Rollins says, are pork rinds okay on keto or carnivore? They are if they have no sugar added and they're cooked in animal fat. Lots of the big uh, pork skin, pork rind, uh, meat skin producers cook their meat skins in canola or soybean or corn oil. You don't want that. You want it to be cooked in either beef tallow or lard. That's, that's what pork skin should be cooked in, okay? Edward says, dropped my A1C from 8.2 to 5.2 over the last year. And my potassium is 0.2 above range on lab work. Is that problematic? Uh, have your dog go over your meds, Edward, and see if you're taking any medicines. That's the most common cause of high potassium. Congratulations on completely reversing your type 2 diabetes with a proper human diet. All right, guys, that's going to do it. Thanks so much for joining me. If you've got more questions, become a patron. The link's down in the show notes, and I will answer your questions, and I will help you. I will walk with you on this journey to better health. I'll see you guys next time. Good night.